So, I, so earlier, uh, Gary, did you propose to pay Medicaid, Medicaid, Medicare for a, a family member for five, a family for five years to save us? Uh, was I hearing that correctly? Well, what I'm, I'm saying is that you know the um, there are options that can be pursued to minimize the impact, and for individuals that are Medicare eligible, um, yes, we're we're quite. Right now, the 937 contract does not require a, an employee to go to Medicare. I want to change that. Um, and I would not want to do anything that would uh, create another circumstance where we weren't forecast, uh, forcing someone to go to Medicare uh, if they were Medicare eligible. I, I just would discourage that uh, for the two reasons that I cited. One being it's cheaper for the town to do so, and as it relates to the annual cost, and it also um, minimizes the impact uh, to our uh, ongoing obligations to staff. Yeah, so I heard you correctly. Medicaid family claim would be five k less than the current. I'm assuming full cost of this year. Yeah, right now that total cost is about eighteen thousand dollars per year. And we would save about forty-eight hundred dollars for a uh, for a um, for a, a couple uh, for two individuals to go to, well, to, to, to a, who are Medicare eligible. It could be a dependent that would have to be covered as well. Right, who qualify? I mean, yeah. well, these things get complicated because we don't always have both family members Medicare eligible because of age. But I mean, we have to face this as as time goes on. I just would uh, not want to see the council do anything that would, again, continue this circumstance where people who are Medicare eligible are not required to get it. Um, that's completely contrary to any rational thought as well. Uh, two things. First of all, I would, I'm not familiar with what uh, Medicare family plan offers for coverage. Uh, I do know that Blue Cross and Blue Shield the plan that we offer us uh, are uh, work for our town it's pretty comprehensive so I don't know the Medicaid family plan would be as comprehensive but the other thing is I there is I'm, a, I don't believe there is a Medicare family it's individual coverage okay, so, and that's, so we do coverage for uh, the retirees and nurses about two individuals yeah okay so but it, it kind of looks like yes we do have to take the action uh, I just don't want to look the, the perception looks that it's this employee, whereas in the past, has this happened in the past? Yes. So I asked no, you, not, since 2005, has anybody? Well, again, I said that we've gone through, I mean, finding uh, paper records on every individual that you know, we don't have. But the, the ones that we were able to find, the folks who were uh, Medicare eligible did not get uh, continuing coverage of health. No, they did not get coverage. No health care coverage whatsoever. They were, they did not get coverage. This would be a change to that policy. This could be a very expensive change. So, I would like to just, I was, I'm going to make a motion that we do not accept this, and I'd rather see us spend more time to study this issue, especially if it sounds like it's something, it could have potential cost saving. I don't want us to rush into a decision. I, I that that. Yeah, that's a motion to. Uh, I said that. Motion to table? Yeah, table. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Further review. <laughs> so it was a motion. There a motion to second. second. Yes, we have a pause. Second by Mr. Lewis. Oh, this is a letter. Yeah. 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 Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Yes. Next item discussion by council board other action on ground mounting of solar photovoltaic installation temporary and moratorium ordinance. Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams, come up and introduce me so we think you can say it. <laughs> 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 My name is Gary Pilardi. This time I'm in front of you, the chair of the board. I wrote the uh, 
Tom, Molly, Molly, and we collaborated on the well-worded demo that we've had. So, so what kind of questions can I ask? If I may, Ms. Clark, I you just received this tonight. Okay. Yeah. All right, so all the detail here, I, I have not had a chance to produce. Um, but I like the summary. Of, yeah. Well, we have, uh, since we've had, we have a, an ordinance in place that was put in place about 18 months ago. Um, and, you know, it's a good first pass. You know, did we think it was a good first pass at the time? No, I think we thought it was going to be more than that. Uh, but immediately upon receiving uh, applications, and we have received them at a fairly good clip, we've had five or six in that time, we've, uh, as the board has seen, that uh, there is there are areas not covered, right? Keep in mind that the people who are presenting to us spend all their time on getting solar projects approved. Okay, we don't do that. Uh, we don't spend all the, all of our time uh, trying to keep them, uh, you know, make sure they've dotted their eyes and crossed their teeth. So we're at a disadvantage. And what we have found is that um, there may be gaps. Questions come up that people can't answer. It's not clear whether the ordinance covers it or not. Um, uh, people like to, uh, the presenters like to talk about the um, improvement to the environment, for example, by the reduction of the production of carbon dioxide. And that's nice. It's only one environmental impact, however. There are others. They don't talk about the benefits of, of shade and all that stuff. Of course not. Right. Well, of course not. Exactly. And if you go to the websites of various solar power companies, as I have, they don't even agree on what that is. But they do copy and paste from the same article, but they put different numbers in it, uh, which is amusing because it's all based on actual equations. Um, so we've seen quite a few things. We've had a lot of feedback from uh, many townspeople who uh, question uh, even how putting a solar array in the middle of the forest meets with the concept of rural agriculture or rural residential. Because there's nothing rural about steel, concrete, and silicon. So, so there are a lot of issues, a lot of concerns. And we see this, and we see a page and we say, uh, as in fact, as Mr. Zofsky pointed out earlier today, this is a, a, a new area, relatively new in the country. Uh, I think it's had uh, greater traction out in the desert areas, uh, so they know a little bit more about it. Uh, but we have stuff to learn. I think a, a short moratorium that will allow us to do a lot of research and gain from the knowledge that others have done before us. We're not trying to be trailblazers here, but we're trying to catch up uh, in terms of our knowledge and make sure that the ordinance we put in place supports uh, uh, the acceptance of a new and important technology that does have positive impacts on, on the environment and can have positive impact even on town revenue. Uh, but balancing that with, as our comprehensive plan, to put the rural nature of our town, because we feel some of that's being lost. So right now it's not balanced. We're going to take this time. We've already planned on, you know, we'll use this time for uh, workshops. Uh, one of you, one of you, Mrs. Walensky, talked about how we will get the input of quite a few people. This is not the planning board working in a vacuum um, and come out with recommendations to improve, to go from solar, ground mounted solar ordinance 1.0 to 2.0. And for those of you who realize, as we talked about earlier, not all technology savvy, but nobody wants 1.0, right? We know, right? You so, don't want to be the alpha test. You know what, yeah, and that's, you know, so, and that's what, that's what we did, but that's fine. I mean, think before, and that's how we learn. But uh, it, it's, it's moving along rapidly. I think we just need uh, to slow it down a little bit. I believe the uh, I believe there's actually a limit when you put a moratorium in. I think it's, we, I don't even think we can pick the time frame. My understanding is the moratorium is 60 days. Is that correct? Well, you know, it's very good. That was, that was discussed at the last planning. Well, it's similar to the, the uh, wind turbine that we put in moratorium into effect. It took a few meetings to get it all uh, ironed out and whatnot. Right. I, certainly something we need to look at. I mean, you heard discussions today about uh, the commission and 
expenses? I, I don't know. Is, is it in here? Uh, actually, we we didn't talk about the expenses. I'm sorry. Yes, the commission policy yes. is is one of the examples of things we want to talk about to improve. Okay. So yeah. So I you mind? Oh, no. yeah, please. So I spent. 45 minutes of the time to exit this planet today talking to them okay. about the whole process. Is that why everyone's talking about No, I talked to Exit. Yeah. So since they oh, use this as their model, I decided to go to the solicit kind of find out myself. So they explained everything that I kind of went through with that. So I have a question to Tom. So, so if this was to be approved, when would this be able to then, this would take two meetings, we'd be looking at early October, unless we scheduled an emergency meeting to then vote on it. This would have to go through an approval process, because this isn't a vote tonight, because it's not sponsored by the Right, right. similar to the last item, this has not been advertised, this right. is not first reading, it's, you have right. to, you so have to do point. that. I think need to clarify something for you, this is not a first reading. Right, that's This right. isn't even an ordinance. No, no. Right, that's okay. This is far for the candidate, I know you're saying that, this is a dialogue, a draft memo, and then you would decide tonight whether or not you want it to draft it would be going to and solicitor and close it would be directed to do such get back to the first reading, you know. Yeah, so I mean, the only decision that can be made tonight is go forward. Do we want to forward this ordinance to the solicitor to draft an ordinance exactly. at our next council meeting? Exactly. That would be first reading and then we take a second reading. Exactly. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, but I'd like to draft one exactly. Well, yeah, and I would like to even see if there's benefit at some point during these six. Well, there's a few things that I've been thinking about this. One, I think we need to have action at the end of 60 days. I think to come out with no action is kind of why put the thing in place to begin with. Two, I think, I don't know if it makes sense to either have a town council liaison during this process to ensure that there's some continuity like we've done in other areas, or does it make sense to have a joint meeting with the planning board so that we can kind of cross collaborate there and then we're not going this back and forth game with some. <coughs> So if I can make a comment on that, all that's good. Um, I think the joint meeting, I think it was what we call workshops, um, and invite the public, get everybody. Right, yeah, so I'm right. getting right. everything firsthand, and everybody, I mean, I have an engineering background, and we, you know, a design review was brainstorming. And, you know, as, uh, you know, one of my mentors said to me, when we came into one of those when I was very young, he said, it's a brainstorming meeting, he said, and I brought the storm. Everybody else has the brains, work it out. And then you click leave. And, and we had and, and sometimes it's very passionate, I would say. But I think that's the best way to do it. I think we'll take more than one because out of that you get some idea, you get to a point of exhaustion, then you come back to changes. But I also agree with what you said about there needs to be concrete action. But I think the concrete action is a set of modifications to the current ordinance, as I said, take it from 1.0 to 2.0, with a lot of confidence from all the research and collective brainstorming we've done to have something we feel very, very strongly about. And, and in there, talking with Tom, at what point does a project become vested for these two elements? Is there a litmus test? Well, after uh, a vote by the planning board, you can either master plan or preliminary. So when you, when it goes through your process and it gets stamped to go through right. the that, that doesn't. Right, that vesting approval from the planning board or binding action on the master plan decision, that's that's good for two years with okay. the applicant can petition the board for a one year consecutive two years. You can get four years on it. Okay. That's one. Yeah. So so basically uh, if you had a liaison, that's like hurting the gas because some of us work and then you know I mean uh, oh, it kind of gets but it kind of gets dicey if we want to liaison for what is going to advise us and we're setting the ordinance. The reality is we set the ordinance. Do we want we want to get input and right. we'll set the ordinance. You know? So that's why the liaison, we don't really need the liaison at this point because they're going to I think we have a pretty comprehensive ordinance right now. It's, it's really comprehensive. It addresses a lot of things. Does it need to be tweaked based on, on your comments? It may need to be tweaked here and there. Does it need a wholesale changeover? I really don't think so. That's just me. Um, well, I'm but, I think, but I think that the, the point is that if, if you need a moratorium, or you're seeking a moratorium so that you can take 60 days to study this and come back 
with concrete chambers to this thing. Then the next step is that we need to, I'll sponsor if you want. We need I'll to sponsor the ordinance at the next council meeting. Yes. A first reading, second reading, following that. And then you'll have an inventory in place. And then you'll have 60 days to make changes. I'll add one more thing since you were with people from Exit today. They have already gone through eight iterations of modifying their ordinance before they put their own moratorium in place. So even after eight sets of tweaks and adjustments, they still felt the need to take a step back, learn more, and apply it. And they're very nice amount as a result of that. And that's a very unique situation. So that is a whole, like, you know, they have to change a council, and there's eight different revisions, and where did the project get vested, and what's not vested. Right. So that was very unique, I think. So, but I am willing to sponsor this in terms of at least getting it through the first reading so that we can kind of see, I think, where to go. And I, I agree, I think, to me, it doesn't make sense to clear out acres of the forest when the forest actually have an offset requirement and it's actually more beneficial to keep them. So, yeah, a lot those of questions that you should be having. There's a lot of places you can put solar panels. Right, exactly. They're already gone. And I know some of it's driven by the state and the incentives that they offer and those types of things, but I'm willing to sponsor it. So, I'm willing to make a motion. You, you, can, you, can get, you can get 10 guys to come in here and tell you that the carbon offset of solar is better than the trees. And 10 guys will say that trees have this benefit. And, and we can fill the room with, with yeah, information can. that's going to contradict each other. It's, it's what do we feel is best for our town going right. forward. And, I have, and the reality of all of this is, is that we can put things in play that we'd like to see. But the reality is if we're not investing the money, we really don't have a lot of say. We need to rely on these guys that are coming in to invest money. And I'll give you a perfect example. People in this room, I'll ask you, how many people in this room think that solar is great? How many people have invested in solar? I have solar in my house. I've invested in it. I made that commitment. Why? Right? Because I see the value of it, I see the worth of it and everything. And so when we go through this process, and because it, it'd be great to sit there and say, we want solar on all our big box stores. But I can't make them do that. But Mr. President, can I chime in real quick? I'm not discrediting solar, right? I think renewable energy is great. I think it has, you know, you go to Europe, you go to California, you go to parts of the US, I think it's really great, you know? But it needs to be done responsibly. We need to actually make sure that we, if the developer wants to come in, we don't have an obligation to the developer. We have an obligation to the town to ensure that the town is not getting screwed over in a deal and that 25 years from now, we're looking back saying, wow, we could have done things different, like the change order process we just went through tonight. If we plan accordingly, there is no reason why solar and the town can't coexist, but we have to do it responsibly. And I think that that's why the moratorium should be supported and that we should at least use the 60 days to see maybe our plan is the greatest plan in the world. Maybe it's flawed and we need to improve it. But until we take the time to actually study it, we won't know. And I think we're finding out now, we've had a lot of discussions about tax stabilization agreements, we've had a lot of discussions about decommissioning agreements, we've had a lot of individual discussions. And I think we're finding out that what seemed great at the beginning is not so great now. So we need to take the opportunity to approve it. So I will make the, a motion to sponsor the solar moratorium for our first reading and have the solicitor draft a resolution. I'm reading this and I know you said you took it from Exeter. Exeter. Um, so I just want to ask the town administrator, because the way this is worded, the town administrator, upon doing proper consideration, finds as follows. Were you a part of this? That's why I want the solicitor to be I want to make sure that it's compliant and it's meeting the right boxes and checking it. And so there, once you have the first reading, like whatever it is, because I don't think this is going to be the order. So, this is, I think this, this is just a draft. draft. I was going to say, yeah, this is this very is much a draft. So it's more like a proposed word. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to change it however you feel. So, I'm operating more for your memo, because I got this idea. So, technically, it shouldn't even be used It's not part of the package. My point isn't that we bend over to developers. My point was is that people are ready to invest in solar. If we want to take a position that we want solar in certain places, we need to make the decision that we're going to invest that and do it as a town. So that, or, or we're not going to allow it if, if that's the case. But you've got to understand that when, when 
people are investing their money in it, if they want solar, there's only one way to get it. Someone has to pay for it. And it's either going to be us or somebody else. And I'm not saying that we bend over to these developers and say, oh yeah, whatever you want, we're going to give it to you. All I'm saying is, you can't dictate sometimes that, oh yeah, we want pocket lots to have solar on We want all big box stores to have solar on We want all of our school buildings to have solar on If we're going to dictate that, that investment, we can, you want to do that, we can. But we can't dictate where it's going to be. No, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying like our comp plan says we need to be pursuing renewable energy. That's part of our comp plan. But it doesn't also say, that we also have to keep it to the character of the land. So it's not saying go out and clear 200 acres of land for solar. There's a trade off. That's what I'm trying to get at. And I'm talking about utilities. I'm not talking about the average resident who wants to go out and put solar panels on their property. I'm talking about the big, big solar developments that are coming in, that are taking up large amounts of land, and are now potentially having the negative ability to transform our land and our character of our town. And, you know, I, I've been thinking for a while we need to slow down. I made the comment a couple weeks ago with this. But I'm not saying it's, it's everybody that has solar is, is going to be affected by this. This is primarily on the utility solar. Based on only from what I've been hearing and what I read in your memo that wasn't in our packet. Yeah, and I think that's a very important point. This is not about, this is specifically about ground mounted solar manufacturing. Manufacturing. Exactly. Right. I understand that. you do not want to stop telling them they're doing it for their business and their home. No, I understand that. I understand that. But, but, but if you read this, that's that's what I'm getting out of this is that we don't want to see, and I'm not saying go ahead and, and, and clear the land. But if you don't if you don't want to see clear cutting of land, but you want to encourage using buildings and, uh, and other open space, you know, parking lots and whatnot, you need guys to invest in that. And so yes. we, we can take that position that that's where we want to go, but understand that people are going to 